Hello, and welcome back to another episode of AI Frontiers, where we bring you conversations with people currently working at the far edges of artificial intelligence. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you a little bit about Valerie. Valerie is the premier creator of open source frameworks for co-owned AI, and it's our mission to empower communities, organizations, and even countries to co-own the AI systems of the future. We've been working with agent-based technology since our launch in 2021, with a special focus on decentralized autonomous agents, and we believe that the artificial general intelligence of the future is likely going to be agentic, and that's why we think this is such an important moment to bring you a broad range of perspectives from people currently working in the space. One of those people is today's guest, Jacob Novak from E2B. As always in these discussions, we covered a lot of ground, and I think you're really going to enjoy hearing Jacob's perspective. So we'll get straight into it. Here's my conversation with Jacob Novak. Tell me what your name is and what you're currently working on. Hi, my name is Jacob, and I work for E2B. We are building AWS for AI agents or something like that. We want to make uh, running LM generated code for AI agents super easy. The problem with, with running LLM generated code is that it's unsafe. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are dependencies which you have to install and which you don't know a priori which you will need. And yeah. Yeah. So, a good place to start then in all of these conversations is if we define our terms. So, how do you define an AI agent? AI agent for me is an application which can adapt to different situations, can reason about them, can react. So usually it will be some LLM model with some tools. Also, yeah, that, that's what what I for, forgot that it should also act. That should mm. have some tools so it can do some actions. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the reasoning is usually that's where we're calling a, an LLM, and um, that's what LLMs can provide in in an agentic software is the reasoning step. That's unique. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Could you maybe give me an example of a program that you would consider an AI agent? and then contrast it with something that you don't consider an AI agent? I think non-agent would be ChatGPT. Mm. Maybe like the code interpreter for, for from OpenAI is on, on the like border of it because mm. it can execute the code, but it doesn't have access to, to internet so and doesn't have any, any external memory. So the action, there's no much results, I, I would say, like mm. in the external world. So it's on the border but when I would say it's, it's an agent and anything which has access to internet and can do actions, I, I would say it's already agent, like for example, Moteon. Yeah. If you know the browsing agent, which can like order you burger from Uber Eats. Yeah. Uh, I've heard code interpretation as an, an answer that's, yeah, as you said, somewhere kind of in the middle, because as you mentioned, it has the ability to act which is one of the, our earlier criteria. Yeah, I think like generally code inspectors are agents, but mm -hmm. the the one from OpenAI is kind of limited because it, it's like, it doesn't have any access to a, a outside world. It's like very, very sandboxed. Yeah, I think I would agree with you there. So now I'm, I'm curious about your background and your personal journey. How did you get into working with AI? I think I, I was always interested in AI and Actually, I, I've tried to get into into the field like five five years ago on the like machine learning, but it didn't didn't like suit me well, mm. or I I didn't feel I'm good at it. And then move out to the backend. There was like few jobs, and then I, I met Vashek, which is our founder. Throughout our common friend, he pitched me E to B, and I was I was sold. It sounded like a future at the time. It was a little bit different. We were more thinking about building an actual agent and the uh, environment for building agents but the, it changed what, what we do now but mm -hmm. we are very close to the field and we are building the building blocks for the for others as a project you guys are very well connected to what's happening in ai agents especially yeah, as exactly the, yeah aggregators and yeah, like paying so, attention so to I, what other people are doing yeah I, I think this way i can enable like ai builders ai agent builders to actually build the agents, mm -hmm. even, even though I don't think I, I'm like suited that well for that, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Did you have any moments that really stuck out to you as like, wow, this is incredible when you were first experimenting? I think the first time I, I, I tried ChatGPT, I was really amazed. And then DALI, it was the same excitement. Yeah. Like, I, I never saw something like that. Yeah, definitely. Same for me also. 
So now returning to what you're currently working on, what about the project made AI agents a particular focus rather than you know some other part of um, the artificial intelligence ecosystem? I, I think that, that this is the future, you know? Yeah. I think uh, it will change how we work and how we spend our time a lot. It will boost the productivity. And I, I think you, as an engineer, I can already feel it. There's a like a GitHub Copilot and Find and Cursor. It, it like just boosts the productivity so much mm -hmm. and it will just get only better. Yeah, for sure. But one more reason why I, I wanted to do this. I always wanted to do something which has impact and mm. like positive impact on, on, on society and i think this this field will yeah definitely there's a there's a ton of potential there in some of my recent conversations i've really been getting the feeling that people are understanding that ai agents will be able to help in all levels of like work and fun and um it's, it won't just be you know raw productivity or or tasks that we solve um, yeah i think that the people usually try to solve the problems which they don't like mm. and the scope which which problems we can now solve is getting just bigger so yeah, I yeah think that's very exciting we, we will solve these problems and do the more interesting ones yeah <laughs> cool um yeah maybe you could tell me a little bit about what working with ai agents has been like over the past three months or so because a lot oh, has yeah. changed recently yeah so in the beginning we followed the trend i would say that there will be like very general agents and so we we were building a more general platform. I think everyone will agree now that it makes mo more sense now to build a very specified agent. Mm. And so also we see the agents which work and which are very like, related to us are the coding agents or code interpreters or any any agent which is running the code. So we are heavily focusing on that, making sure that it's super easy, super fast, very important for these agents because their users are waiting for the answer. Yeah. What can you add or change that makes it easy? Like, where's the complexity that you're that you're actively reducing right okay. now? We, we are making sure that you know, the developers doesn't have to care about the infrastructure. They, they can just use our SDK. Mm. which is super simple and in like in few few lines you can pin up the, the micro vm run the code get the answer and that's it you don't have to care about anything else which would enable the developers to build actually hm not build any infrastructure yeah for it you mentioned a single focus ag or specialized agents and that's something that's come up in a few of our conversations so far maybe you could say a little bit more about why you think that works better than trying to give an ai agent every tool in the world that doesn't seem to be the right approach and maybe you could talk a little bit about why that why that is i think it, it, it can be related to people if, if you hmm. if you have like so many choices it's hard to choose the right one also there's a, like limited context and if, if you can't choose the correct one the the result will suffer also if you choose very specified on some, some task i think you can make it more reliable and that's very important because if if it sometimes work and sometimes it doesn't you probably won't use it yeah definitely that's kind of my my barometer for whether i find an ai agent useful is how reliable and how inconsistent uh my end result is yeah. and i think for a lot of people that's going to be really important um, maybe we can talk a little bit more about the design. Are there particular elements or ways of building an AI agent that you've found really impact its effectiveness that make it work better? Uh, actually, I don't have that many uh, or almost any experience with actually building the agents, mm -hmm. but uh, at least from what I've read and what I see around it, I think like REC is very popular, right? And uh, so, some some prompting methods like a uh, chain of thought. I don't know how, how it's called now, like criticizing the plan. Uh, let the LM criticize the plan and uh, yeah, think the about it. Reflection. Yeah. And I, I think lately it's a uh, multi agent. It's quite popular that you have like uh, specialized agent, agents for each task and and they can cooperate on the, on the task. Yeah, definitely. At Valerie, we started in with multi-agent systems so it's something that i definitely i agree with you 100 percent there that i think it's going to make a huge a huge impact even more than just regular ai agents well um, yeah it makes sense to have a system of agents yeah like if, if you connect them then 
the, you have much more possibilities. Yeah, yeah, you get things like redundancy, you can have them look at each other's work, you, uh, you gain advantages over trust, and uh, depending on your approach, decentralization as well. I do want to ask a little bit, a little bit more about um, what E2B is doing, and um, I think right now is a really important moment for developers and builders and anyone who is able to come up with the creative thinking required to build these systems of the future. Like right now is an incredible opportunity for really anyone who's willing to put in the put in the effort. What do you think people could be building or doing right now that is worth their time? What are you excited about? I think that the I think it's it's all it's still the same. It's mm. find something which interests you. If if you have like some problem in that which which is worth solving, I think it, it's great era to think if AI can be applied there and how, how can it become like easier to do something. If there are like some repetitive tasks, uh, it's it's not much different than it was. I I would say, but you mm -hmm. have now better better tools. Yeah, definitely. If I if I had to point to one thing that I would say has changed between now and maybe three years ago, it's the tools that are available. Like now a lot of things are actually possible that weren't before. Yeah, I, I think even ideas, because it's not that the idea comes from nowhere. I think it evolves. Yeah, that's true. And if you have the tools that it's slowly getting, because I think where we are right now and three years ago, we had almost the same tools, but it, it took some time to get get here because each idea adds, adds up. Mm. And yeah, you're right. Things do build on top of each other. And access to new tools and new new options does give you slightly better ideas and the ability to think in new ways. Kind of on that same path, I won't hold you to any of these predictions, but I, I'd like to look towards the future a little bit. And we'll start with where we are right now. Self-improvement is something that a lot of people are very interested in looking for. So how far do you think we are on the path to self-improving AI? I think we already have something like that with reinforcement learning, mm. right? Yeah. But I, I think with the LLMs and the like agents, it kind of is already ha here as well with a uh, vector that database and memory. So it can use the information, the results of the past experience, but the like true self-improving AI, something like human, like, I think it, it will take some time. I think the uh, the technology has to change a little bit. I don't believe mm -hmm. that the LM as now are like enough or the, the model is capable of doing it. I, I really like the idea of something which is called neuro symbolic uh, AI, mm. where instead of the tokens, you have like symbols, which should represent uh, like real things. I think it's more more close to how humans think that it like yeah. can connect connect and reason about things in more concrete way than LM can. Yeah, it's not just generating uh, next token, but really reason about it and use logic. I I think that will be something like that in the future. And once we get there, then I think there will, there will be also a self improving AI. Yeah. Okay. I look forward to seeing how we how we get there. On the topic of autonomy, like something that's quite cool about AI agents is they can be autonomous actors. So have we or have you or maybe have you seen someone else create a truly autonomous AI agent? And if not, what elements do you think are missing to achieve true autonomy? I think it depends on, on what, what do you mean by autonomy. It, mm -hmm. Like you can give it task and it can do it alone. It can reason about it a little bit and complete the task with, without your, your assistance. So I would say that's autonomy, but like through autonomy that it will think, okay, in this situation, this, this could be a good idea. I will try that. And if not, then I will try this. It's very complicated. And I think it, it, we are not there yet. Some AGI or something like that, that, that's far ahead of us, I think. Are there particular elements that you think that stand out to you as ways that we could get there? Uh, as I said, I think the symbol, neuro symbolic AI mm. would be a, a way to get there. But a part of that, I, I don't know. It's on scientists to find out. Yeah, these are big questions. In terms of capability unlocks, like technical, technical capability unlocks, is there anything that you 
that you think might be a, a likely candidate to come come next? I, th I think that there will be browser agents which will be very helpful. Like I don't know, you want to buy something and you, you want to do the research and and then order it. I think that something like that we will have very soon. I think that a lot of businesses will use agents for like assistance and automating some easier tasks. Mm. Also, that's not really agent-like, but I think there will be like substitution for, for people if they are not online that you can talk mm. with on based on the history with other people. I think there, there are some challenges to solve like privacy and not disclosing some private information or information which shouldn't be disclosed with you but I, I think this could be very 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 helpful one thing that came up in in my last conversation was this idea of if your company could have a agentified version of your ceo this could be somebody that you could ask a very particular type of question at two or three in the morning when you don't want to bother this person okay. but if it's if there's somebody who has like yeah. you know that's really the only person you could take that question to if you have an identified version of them, you could talk to it whenever you wanted. Yeah, I, I think, or it depends how it would be like set up. But yeah. I think there are questions which you would like to ask, but you don't because like you are scared or ashamed maybe. Mm, yeah. From this emotional like uh, perspective, it could be very, very useful as well. Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't considered that before. One thing that just popped into my mind, like right now, AI agents are capable capable of a lot and they're extremely cool. But it's, this is still a relatively like niche area that not, not a lot of people are paying attention to. When you imagine what might bring us to a higher level of awareness, do you think it might be first enterprise level AI, AI agents like working for big companies or something that's maybe more oriented towards the individual? Because I, I can imagine it going either way, but I wonder like how you feel about that. Yeah, I think it can be both ways for sure. Maybe I'm more believer of going corporate first mm. you know maybe not like the big corporates i think that it will take time because of the reliability and uh i think if, if you think about cloud it, it took so, so so many years to adapt by, by the big companies but it will slowly grow from the startups to smaller companies and then to, to the corporates in the personal life i think we will use them but not like directly that it, it will it will be fe features which mm. we don't know that are agents they will be like hidden but it will use ai yeah in my in my yeah. very first conversation um something that came up was uh i forget the i forget the name of the person hey this is thomas just jumping in really quickly from the editing room today i wanted to let you know that the term that i can't remember here is the ai effect and it was coined by pioneering artificial intelligence researcher john mccarthy I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a blog post by Constantine Bueller that gives an interesting exposition of the term and how it relates to this current moment. Anyway, back to the episode. But basically, it's this idea that like, as soon as something becomes very effective, we stop calling it artificial intelligence. Like, we oh. use we use computer vision all the time, but 35 years ago, computer vision was a very specific academic field of research in artificial intelligence. But it's something that we use every day, but we don't consider like we keep moving the the goalposts for what's considered AI. So I think that maybe agents might also be something like this yeah. as well, where you guys are saying we're using it, but we're not even thinking of it as like, oh, I mean, I'm interacting with an AI. Yeah, that's great observation. I never thought about it way. Yeah. But this, 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 yeah, what I what I meant that you you will. I don't know, you will use the app and click on a button to do something. And nowadays it's not possible because it's too complicated. But yeah, on the on in, in background, it will run the agent and it, it will solve the task and you will get the result. So that's what I thought by that. Cool. So as we get towards the end here, one thing I've been asking people for is recommendations on ways to get involved or to learn more. Is there any reading, learning pathways, anything you would want to recommend to people who are interested but want to go a little bit deeper, learn more? Sure. Uh, I, I think that Andre Karpati is like really, really good source, which I would really recommend. Also, our blog, e2b.dev blog. I think there's a, a lot of interesting articles which, which are very good intro to, to the topic. There's also a list of a lot of agents that you can try. And I think it's great to find a 
agent which you like, which you like relate to, and follow the founders of of, of the startup or of, of the agent. If if you are engineer and if they are open source, which quite a lot of them are, try to contribute. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Those are those are great, and I can endorse the agent list. I have used this quite a, quite a bit already. It's great. I did want to ask about um, open source because Valerie's framework is open source and it's something that we're okay. quite committed to. So when I have a when I have a guest on who's also working on an open source project, I do like to ask them to kind of make the pitch for open source. Like, why do you think this matters, particularly and particularly why do you think it matters for AI focused projects? I think the better question is why not. It depends on, on what you are building, but I think the stuff we do. It's great to have open source because there are a lot of like security concerns, which can be, it, it's better if, if everyone can see the code because you, you will find all the, not all, but a lot of vulnerabilities, which mm. would be otherwise hidden and yeah. you wouldn't know about. Also, it's great to have like community around, around the product and people contributing or just watching. Do, do you have anything else? Well, one of the reasons that I think definitely at Valerie we see it as, as particularly important for AI is there's a centralization risk where innovation can become concentrated in a way that's counterproductive for everyone, even, even if the outcomes from the highly centralized closed source projects are quite good. There's always a risk in relying on something that could disappear tomorrow or as we've seen, especially with some of the more recent generative AI models that are nerfed so hard, there's a ton of innovation and potential that can become locked away. This is just my personal opinion, but a closed source project that's very attractive can kind of suck the air out of the room in terms of like talent and where innovation goes. I think the whole ecosystem is worse off for it. Yeah, and especially in the AI field where training these huge models takes enormous amount of money. Yeah. So only, only a few companies can do it. I think that Facebook with Lama is doing great stuff and like Mistral as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I also like I also like what you pointed out about the I mean the security is a really obvious a, a really obvious one, but it does matter so much to to have that level of transparency, because yeah, if you're if you're bringing in a tool for your own project, yeah, like just contracting out something where you you don't know subscribe to something, you just have to to trust them that when they say they've audited it that they have. And it, I think it helps adoption as well because yeah. if I see some project with, which is open source, I can look at the GitHub and go through the code. And I I don't know, it helps me to like evaluate if if it, if it fits my need better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Something that other guests have mentioned is that uh, a great way to to learn more is to start contributing to an open source project because it gives you access to the people who are currently building the most exciting stuff. You can go work with them directly just by contributing. And that's not something that's available in a closed source project. And I think it works both ways because if you have some, some issue or you want to use some feature in some way which is not available, mm -hmm. you can do it. You can code it yourself and add it to the project which you can do for closed source so you, you can write to support and tell yeah. them you yeah. how much you need it if yeah. they respond it will take probably a long time in open source you can do it right away yeah for sure those are all great all great reasons um okay so where can people keep up with you and and your work you can follow me on twitter it's underscore jq you can follow our company twitter which is e2b oh. underscore dev also, as I mentioned, the blog and and GitHub. We are open source, so uh, you can flow the newest stuff there, and, all, and you can contribute as I said. Yeah, awesome. So, also, also, also Discord, of course. Okay, so we've gotten to the end of our discussion. I'll be sure to get all of the resources and links that you mentioned uh, into the okay. show notes so that people can check those out. So we can leave it there. I want to thank you for your time. It's been a very interesting conversation, yeah. and yeah, I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, that is it for this episode of AI Frontiers. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. To learn more about Jacob's work with E2B, we've got links to the resources that he mentioned in the show notes or the description box if you're watching on YouTube. To learn more about Valerie, our open source framework for co-owned AI, ways that you can build your own decentralized autonomous AI agent services, check us out at valerie.xyz. You can also follow us on X where we are at Valerie AG. All right, until next time.